Well, in his chosen game, uh, which is seven card stud, uh, he is so far up there. And it's tough when someone plays better than you, like he does me, it's hard for me to rank him because how would I technically know? But I know he's way up there, having played with him all the time. And he doesn't get the credit for it because seven card stud is a game that's virtually impossible to televise with, a, with the fact that you have eventually three hole cards, four up cards, and picture a five-handed game, you'd have 35 hole cards all across the screen. So his chosen game is doesn't get the kind of credit that it deserves because people like to watch things on television and this is not conducive to it. Rod is, if you saw his whole cards on TV, you would see what how many right decisions he makes. But you can't see that. So he's kind of an unknown great player because of the game he played. I met him at the uh, Stardust Hotel, which was made famous or infamous in the movie Casino. It was called the Tangiers Hotel. And uh, we played there for at least two years together in every 10 and 20, 15 and 30, or 30 and 60 game, which was relatively big at the time, where you could win or lose in the 30 and 60. You could win or lose four or 5,000 if you played long enough. Uh, I think I always spent at least half my bankroll on dinner, <laughs> and I, I enjoyed that. I mean, that's the thing I always s sort of splurged on, and uh, I don't know, I think your dad was a little more conservative in the beginning. Uh -huh. He was more interested, and obviously did quite well. He bought a lot of property every time he'd win, and he was a big winner in the early days of uh, our relationship. Big winner. and. Uh, we had to overcome a lot during those days, and he overcame it a lot better than me. There was a presumption of guilt in your opponents as opposed to the normal presumption of innocence. Somebody had to prove their honesty in those days back in Vegas. There was, I'm not saying everyone, but it was almost socially acceptable to be part of some kind of scam. Not everyone, but I'm talking about a nice group of people. And Rod never got involved in that. That's the one thing we had in common. I'd like to think that we were totally honest and never used drugs. But on the other hand, we had vices worse than that. Uh, yeah. Horses, betting on horses and betting on sports probably was uh, really detrimental to our poker play. To, uh, every, in that 30 and 60 game, I mentioned drugs earlier. Without exaggeration, 80% of the people in that, that played in that game, which is probably a group of 25 of us, they would leave the table every half hour. And there was a lot of coke used yeah. during those days. And that was the early, in the late 70s or early 80s. I would say I took a piece of them 50 times in my life and probably won 48 times. I'm not kidding. That's a He was the, one of the only people that always kept in contact with me, even though I might be playing in New York or wherever I was. Most of the time I was in trouble, and people tended to avoid a gambler that's in trouble because you know part of the conversation is going to be about money. <laughs> well, your dad, I'm not, I am certain he was the only one always checked on me, even though he knew I was doing badly. Most of the time, People would check on you when they know you just made a big win. And I don't blame them, but Rod checked on me at all times. And uh, I'm talking about for 49 years, so that's pretty interesting. But this is, this is something that I feel so confident in, that he was one of the few people I grew up with in Vegas, more or less, that was, as far as I'm concerned, he was, you couldn't be more honest. Now, was he the best cheat in the world that <laughs> I know it? I doubt that, yeah. you know what I mean? Uh, one of the weirdest things was, I think, when he used my condo or apartment. I don't even know the definition. I was out of town. He stayed there. And I get this call from him and say, hey, I just uh, made a citizen's arrest of some guy that was in front of your apartment with all your 
stereo equipment and all some of your valuables parked outside. And he said, I held him here and called the police. And I said, what did he say he was doing? And he said he was mo hired to move Thomas Je Jefferson's furniture or some <laughs> old <Founding> political <laughs> figure's name that didn't make any sense. And uh, Rod, Rod, I am positive, gave every detail, called the police, did the right thing. We went to trial. And unfortunately, whoever that was hired, Harry Claiborne, who at the time was one of the most famous attorneys and successful attorneys, became a federal judge, I think. They beat the case. I don't know how they beat the case, but, uh, but Rod did whatever he could. He showed up, filled out all these forms. And uh, so he actually could have, I'm not saying he risked his life, but I'm not sure if most people would have grabbed the guy and said, you can't leave.